Hello, nakikita na po ba, ma'am sir? Yes, sir. Yes, po. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Sir Kevin. Uh, before we start our discussion for today, uh, let me introduce first ourselves. By the way, I'm James Perfecto, uh, together with my partner, Ms. Gemalin Labaria. So we're going to talk about uh, dispersion and schoolness. So our agendas are first, is the introduction and measure of dispersion. Second is the significance and properties of measuring variation. Third one is the measure of schoolness and kurtosis. So for us to better understand our uh, discussion for today, let us know first the difference between population and sample. So when we say population, the first thing that comes up in our mind is siyempre group of people. Am I right po? Good, yes po. So now let's say this is our population. This circle is our population. So if we take some part of it, if we take some portion of it, that is what we call the sample. So meaning, sample is only a part of the population. Are you with me here, po? Yes, good. Okay, now let's proceed to the introduction and measure of dispersion. First, what is dispersion? Dispersion are the numbers that describe the scatter of data, meaning yung pagkakahiwa-hiwalay, pagkakalayo-layo ng ating data. So we have two samples here. First is the closed dispersion, which is the blue one. So meaning, from the word itself, close, meaning ang given data natin ay magkakalapit. So for example, we have the median of, median of 50 here. Then ang sumunod na data natin is 59, 58, 51, and uh, 52. So meaning, magkakalapit ang ating given data sa close dispersion. So while on the other hand naman, sa wide dispersion, magkakalayo ang ating data. For example, we still have the median of 50. Then sumunod na data is 10, then may 100 tayo dito, then may 150. So magkakalayo ang ating uh, given data sa ating wide dispersion. So we have the measure of dispersions. First is the range. Second are the quantiles. Third is the variance. Fourth is the standard deviation. And last but not the least is the mean absolute deviation or also called as MAD. That's what you feel when you are not happy. If you're not happy, you are mad. Okay po? Joke lang, sinigang. So now let's proceed to the first one. The first one is the range. So what is range? This is the difference between the greatest data value and the least data value. Actually, guys, this is the uh, simplest measure of uh, dispersion. So from the word itself, difference, meaning may magaganap na subtraction. Okay, so range is equals to highest data value minus the lowest data value. In short, maximum minus minimum. Okay, so for example, the ages of MBA students are 22, 32, 30, 25, 35, 28, and 30. So the first thing that we're going to do is to arrange it from lowest to highest. So let's check. 22, 25, 28, 30, 30, 32, uh, and 35. So our lowest is 22 and our highest is 35. So 35 minus 22 is equivalent to 13. So 13 is our range for this example. Am I clear po? Good. So let's have another example naman. So in this example, we have the datas of 0, negative 13, negative 2, 5, 30, negative 15, and 12. So di ba guys, kapag meron tayong negative, uh, the higher the number, the lower its value. Am I right? Okay. So in this case, in our example, ang lowest value natin is negative 15. Next is negative 13, negative 2, 0, 5, 12, and 30. So our lowest is 15, negative 15, and our highest is 30. So 30 minus negative 15, pag yan situation natin, guys, di ba, magiging addition siya. So it will be 30 plus 15, is equals to 45. So our range for this example is 45. Are you with me here, po? Am I clear, po? Yes. So now, so now let's proceed to the quantiles, naman. Uh, what are the quantiles? This separates the data into two equal size groups in order of numerical value. So just like the median that was discussed by the group on last last week, uh, 
Di ba, yung median, it divides the data into two equal parts. Hinahati niya sa gitna yung data. So, ganun din dito sa quantiles. So, what are the types of quantiles? First, first are the quartiles. From the word itself, quartiles, quarter. So, it divides data into four equal parts. So, each quartile is equivalent to 25% in of observation, okay? Second is decils, divides data into 10 equal parts. So meaning uh, each decile is 10%. Next is the percentiles, divides data into 100 equal parts. So meaning each percentile is equivalent to 1% in observation each. Okay? So now for example, let's have an example. Ito muna tayo sa quartiles. So the given data are 12, 8, 2, 19, 14, 16, 4, 11, 20, 15, and 9. So first thing, again, that we're going to do is to arrange it from lowest to highest. So ito siya. 2, 4, 8, 9, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 19, 20. So next thing na gagawin natin is kukunin natin ang ating median for this set. Okay? So dito sa quartals, ma'am sir, ang ating median is ang second quartal or Qs of 2. So how do we do that? So, ilang ba ang ating data is given? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, we have uh, 11 data here. So, automatically, ang ating 6 data ay ang ating median or ang ating second quartile. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 12 is 12 ang ating 6 data. So, siya ang ating median. Okay? Lagi gets po ba? Yeah. Okay. So, sir, question. Paano kang, kung dalawa ang ating nasa gitna? Okay, very good. So, let's say instead of 11 data ang meron tayo, let's say, kunwari, uh, we have 12 data. So, kapag 12 data ang meron tayo dito, may matitirang dalawang media sa gitna. Okay? So, what we're gonna do is to get lang yung mean nila, yan natin to. For example, ito yung 12 and 14, siya yung dalawa nasa gitna. Kukunin lang natin yung mean nila, yan natin, which is equals to 26 divided by 2 equals to 13. So, uh, 13 is going to be our median pag uh, dalawa ang ating nasa gitna. Okay? Clear po ba? Okay. So, let's go back to our example. 12 is our median here or our second quarter. Yes, sir. We can hear okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So, the next na gagawin natin is to find our first quarter naman. So, how do we do that naman? Dito naman tayo sa first five values. Kukunin natin yung gitna niya, which obviously is 8. Ito yung gitna niya. This is gonna be our first quartal. Bakit? Kasi may natirang dalawa dito sa kabila. May natirang dalawa dito sa kabila. So, ganun din gagawin natin sa third quartal. Uh, ang gitna niya is 16. Am I right? Okay. So, may natira ding dalawa dito sa kabila. Then, may natira sa kanan. So, equally on both sides. Okay? So things will be different kapag gumamit na tayo ng formula. So this is gonna be our formula for this one. Use of K. So yung K meaning kung ano yung kukunin natin. For example, kukunin, gusto natin kunin yung first quartile. Ang gagawin na lang natin is isa substitute lang natin. Gagawin natin yung 1 ito. Then over 4. 4? Over 4 kasi we are going to divide the data into 4 equal parts. Okay? So, yung n naman natin is equivalent to 11 because we have 11 data here. That gets po? Okay. So, 11 plus 1 is equals to 12 plus 1 divided by 4 is equals to 3. So, sir, ano ba tong 3 na to? This is the location of our first quartile. So, bilangin natin, this is our first data. This is our second data and this is our third data, which is the first quartile. Naintindihan po ba? Okay, thank you. So now, ganun din ang gagawin natin sa third quartile naman. Substitute lang natin to. Gawin natin 3 divided by 4 times the number. Same lang. 12 plus 1 is equals to 12 times 3 is equals to 36 divided by 4 is equals to 9. So this is the location of our third quartile. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 16 is our third quartile. Am I clear po? Okay. So now let's proceed to the decimals demand. 
we're going to use the same example. So now sa deciles, ang ating median is the fifth deciles. Okay, so automatically, 12 is our median or our D5. So ganun din. So ang pinagkaiba lang nila sa formula ay ang ating denominator. Instead of 4, gagawin natin itong 10 because we're going to divide it into 10 equal parts. So ganun pa rin to. So for example, ang gusto natin kunin is ang 8 decile. Gawin lang natin 8 over 10. Then same pa rin to, 12 plus 1 is equal to 12 times 8 divided by 10 is equal to 9.6. So now mayroon tayong decimal. Next thing that we're going to do is bilangin ulit natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Since meron tayong decimal na 0.6, ibig sabihin ang ating D of 8 is somewhere here, nasa gitna, nasa pagitan ng 16 and 19. Okay? So sir, question ulit, paano natin makukuha yung uh, exact value ng ating D of 8? Okay? So first thing that we're gonna do is kukunin natin yung lowest value ng dalawa. So sa 16 and 19, ang lowest value natin is 16. So kunin natin 16 plus the decimal na nakuha natin dito which is 0 0.6 times the difference ng 19 and 16 which is 3. Okay, nagigets po? Okay, so 3 times 0 0.6 is equals to 1.8 plus 16 is equals to 17.8. So our exact value for the D of 8 is equals to 17.8. Are you with me here po? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Pero sir, will you accept questions for that computation? Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma for the given uh, computation, sir, uh, as you mentioned, 16 plus 0 0.6 multiplied by 3. But okay. the given below is D8, 9.6. Sorry, Type sorry. Type error lang po. Dito rin, ah. dito pa rin tayo sa decimals, no? Yes po, sir. Ah, itong 0.6 po, ma'am? Yes, correct, sir. Dito o natin naku... Baba. Dito natin siya nakuha, ma'am. Yung decimal lang ang kukunin natin sa ating location ng diso of 8 for us to get the exact value of our diso of 8 po. So, i-remove po natin yung whole number. So, we yes, will use the decimal point. Copy po. Yes, ma'am, po. Kasi nabilang na natin yung location niya, which is this one, yung 9. So ang kukunin na lang natin is yung decimal point for us to get the exact uh, value of our D of 8. Okay po? Okay po? Yes. Thank you. Salamat. So now let's proceed to the percentiles naman. So we're gonna use the same example pa rin para hindi tayo malito. So dito naman sa percentiles, ang ating median is ang 58th percentile. Okay? So this is going to be our 58th percentile, 12 pa rin. So let's... So ang ating denominator naman is 100 instead of 10 tsaka 4 because we're going to divide the data into 10 or 100 equal parts, sorry. So now let's say ang kukunin natin is the 64th percentile. Same pa rin as kanina. So, a substitute lang natin to ng 64 divided by 100 times same pa rin, 12 plus 1 is, uh, sorry, sorry, 11 plus 1 is equals to 12 times 64 is equals to 768 divided by 100 is equals to 768, okay? So, bilangin natin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, since may decimal ulit tayo, andito siya sa gitna ng ating, ng 14 and 15, okay? Kunin na ulit natin yung exact value niya. So the lowest value of this one sa 14 and 15 is 14. Nakuha natin. Then kukunin natin decimal place niya, which is 0. 0.68 plus the difference of 15 and 14, which is 1. So 0. 0.68 times 1 is equals to, ganun pa rin, plus 14 is equals to 14.68. So that is our exact value for 64th percentile. Okay? That's po. Yes. Thank you. So now let's proceed to the mean absolute deviation naman, which is the MAD. So if you're not MAD, you are sad. Okay. Oh. It is also known as the average deviation or average absolute deviation. So it is the average of the absolute values of differences from the mean. So we have the two, we have two samples here. Uh, first sample is uh, has the data of two, two, four, four. And second, datas are 1, 1, 6, and 4. So dito muna tayo sa first data. Sa so first sample muna tayo. 
So first thing that we're going to do is to find the mean of our data. So 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 12 divided by the number of data, which is 4, is equal to 3. So 3 is our mean for this example. Okay? So pag ginrap natin to, we have the numbers of 2, given data of 2. So isa pang 2, then 4, another 4, and this is our mean, which is 3. Okay? So dito naman tayo sa sample B. Same thing na gagawin natin, kukunin natin ang ating mean. 1 plus 1 plus 6 plus 4 is equals to 12. Divided by 4 is equals to 3. This is also our mean. So as you can see, pareho sila ng mean. So pag ginraph natin to, we have 1, another 1, then 6, and 4. And then our mean is 3 pa rin. Pareho lang sila. So let's go back to our sample 1. Next thing that we're going to do is to find the absolute uh, value of our data from the mean. So these are first uh, data, 2 minus the mean. Second data is 2 minus the mean. Four, a third data is 4 minus the mean. And same as the last data. So 2 minus 3 is equals to negative 1. So our absolute value for that is 1. So same dito, absolute value nga is 1. 4 minus 3 is equals to 1, and 4 minus 3 is equals to 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equals to 4, divided by 4, the number of data. So our mean absolute deviation for this example, sa, sa first example natin is 1, okay? So now sa kabila naman, ganun din ang gagawin natin. So this is our first data, 1 minus the mean. 1 minus the mean, 6 minus the mean, and 4 minus the mean. So 1 minus 3 is equals to negative 2, which has the absolute value of 2. 1 minus 3, get on then. 6 minus 3 is equals to 3. 4 minus 3 is equals to 1. So 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 is equals to 8. So 8 divided by 4 is equals to 2. Okay? So this is our mean absolute deviation for our second example. So as you can see, pareho sila ng mean, pero magkaiba sila ng mean absolute deviation. Bakit? Kasi as you can see in the graph, in the first sample, iisa lang ang kanilang pagitan sa mean. While on the second sample, ay mas scattered siya, mas hiwahiwalay. Okay? Lagi gets po? Yeah. Am I clear po ba? Okay. So next is the variance. What is the variance? Variance is the distance of any data from the mean. So we have here the ungroup data, formula for the ungroup data, and we also have the formula for group data, whereas the mu is the mean of population, x bar is the mean of sample, x is the individual data, n is the count of data, and then this one is the summation or sum. Then f is the frequency. But na focus muna tayo sa ungrouped data para mas maintindihan natin, okay? So now sa population, we are using the notation of sigma squared. While on the sample, s squared naman ang ginagamit natin. And then difference nila sa formula is we're using sa population is mu, which is the mean of population. And then sa sample naman is x bar, which is the mean of sample. So though pareho lang silang mean, Pero magkaiba lang sila ng symbol. Then sa denominator naman, ang difference lang nila ay mayroon tayong n minus 1 dito. Okay, for example, the ages of MBA students are 22, 32, 30, 25, 35, 28, and 30. So since our example is only a sample set, hindi siya full, hindi siya uh, population, is only a sample set. So ang gagamitin natin formula is the formula for sample, which is this one. Okay. So I'll just leave it here for our reference. This is going to be our formula. So now we're uh, gagamitin natin ay yung PEMDAS. Just like last, last week, gumamit tayo ng PEMDAS. So ano ba ang nauuna sa PEMDAS? Diba letter P, which stands for parentheses. So in this case, our parentheses is X minus X bar. So for us to be able to get this, kailangan muna natin kunin ang ating x bar, which is the mean of sample. Okay? So pag natin mean, 22 plus 32 plus 30 plus 25 plus 35 plus 28 plus 30 divided by the number 
uh, of data is which is seven is equals to 28.857. Okay, so this is our mean for this example. Since nakuha na natin yung mean, pwede na natin siyang isubtract sa ating uh, individual data, which are this one. Okay. So 22 minus the mean is equals to this. 32 minus the mean is equals to this. 30 minus the mean is equals to this, and so on and so forth. Po. Ito yung difference nila. So next, uh, so next naman sa appendas, di ba yung sumunod sa P, which is letter E, which stands for exponent. Okay. So in this case, our exponent is squared. So kukunin lang natin ang squared nito, which will give us this one. And then after that, is a sum up lang natin lahat ng to. Kasi uh, yung nasa formula natin, meron tayong summation, okay? Which will give us 112.854. So guys, this is gonna be our numerator for this example. So kukunin na lang natin yung denominator, which is n minus 1. So n is equivalent to 7, which are the numbers of thetas, okay? n minus 1, which is 7 minus 1, is equals to 6. So we have 112.854 divided by 6 is equals to 18.809 or 18.81. So this is going to be our variance for this example. Am I clear po? Okay. So now let's proceed to the standard deviation naman. What is the standard deviation? It is the square root of the variance. So in standard deviation, we also have group data and we also have uh, sorry, ungroup data, and we also have the uh, the group data. Same pa rin siya. So, focus pa rin tayo sa ungroup data. Excuse me, sir. How about the group of the variance? The example group for the variance. Do we have ex example, sir? Because we already discussed the ungroup. How about the group? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, later siya. Ikaw, kung ko muna kasi ito sa ungroup data na sample natin. Babalik tayo, ma'am, sa variance ng group data naman. So now focus muna tayo sa ungroup data, as I said. So yung formula nila sa, sta sa standard deviation and uh, variance is almost the same lang. Pinakaiba lang nila is meron tayong square root dito. Okay, so from the example kanina, given example kanina natin, nakuha na natin yung mean dito. Nakuha na natin yung numerator and denominator. Nakuha na natin ang ating variance which is 18.809. So ang gagawin na lang natin is kukunin natin ang square root nito, which is 4.337. So this is our standard deviation for our example. Okay? Am I clear po? Yes. Okay. So now let's go back to variance naman. So kanina, ungroup tayo. So sa question ni Ma'am Christel, uh, kanina, ungroup, ungroup tayo ngayon sa group naman, which will be discussed by Miss Jamalin Labaria. Um, hello po. Sorry, hindi ko matapan niya. Edwin, Edwin ni Mr. Perfecto. So, yan. For the variance, it is the distance of any data from the mean. So, again, for the formula ng group data, for population is sigma squared is equals to summation of the product of x minus mu raised to second power and f all divided by to n. For the sample naman, it is s squared is equals to summation of product of x minus mean squared all divided by to n minus 1. So for the group data, we'll be using a different set of examples. So for now, um, we will be using the set of, ex set of exam scores of MBA students as follows. So for this, isipin na lang natin na sample siya para kasi since mas complicated yung formula ni sample, iisipin na lang natin na this set of data is for sample. Okay? So for the computation of variance, my tactic or my technique to compute is gumagawa muna tayo or gagawa muna tayo ng table. So here's the table. It consists of six columns. So for the first row, ito yung score, frequency. I sorry for the first time, first row, it is score, frequency, x, x minus mean, x minus mean squared, then frequency times x minus mean squared. Okay, for the x, kung natatandaan pa natin yung formula ng mean, 
previously na nireport nung unang-unang group of problems last week, for the X, para ma-identify natin, kailangan nating ikunin yung average nung naka-group na data mo or yung naka-range na data mo. So, for this, um, for the second row, yung 80 minus 82. So, ang gagawin lang natin, ipa-plus natin yung 80, si lower value, then si higher value, si 82. So, we'll be getting 162. We will divide it into 2. Then, we will be getting 81. So, pre-computed na rin for the other rows. Ayan na siya, 84, 87, 90, 93, 96, 99. So, before we proceed to the fourth column, kukunin natin si mean. Kailangan na natin siya. So, kailangan makuha natin si mean, which is, for the mean, yan. For 81 times 1 plus 84 times 2 and so on and so forth, all divided by to 13. Si n natin is yung summation of f. Yung 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. So, it equals to 13. Makukuha natin is 1,158 divided by to 13 or 89.077. So, since nakuha na natin si mean, which is yung 89.077, pwede na natin siyang i-subtract doon sa ating x. So, 81 minus 89.077 for the first row, ang makukuha natin is negative 8.077. So, that's um, pre-computed na rin for the other rows. Then, the next naman, for the 1, 2, 3, 4th column, ay, say, 5th column, ang gagawin lang natin is square natin yung value na nakuha natin from the 4th column. So, for that, so, negative 8.077 raised to the second power is equals to 65.238. Then, for the second row, 25.776. Next that we will be doing for this last column, yung six column natin, i-multiply lang natin si x minus mean squared do yung nakalagay doon sa ating fifth column doon sa second column which is yung frequency. So it will be 1 times 65.238 equals to 65.238. For the second row, 25.776 times 2 is equals to 51.552. So, since nakuha na natin yan, isasum lang natin yung ating 6 column, ang makukuha natin is 348.072. Since nakuha na natin yung mga data na kailangan natin, ipaplot lang natin siya doon sa ating formula. Again, the formula is S squared is equals to summation of the product of F and X minus mean squared all divided by 2 and minus 1. So, nakuha na natin yung ating dividends sa taas. So, meron 348.072. Then, yung N natin is yung total ng ating frequency. So, it is 13, then minus 1. Kukunin na natin yung value doon sa quotient. So, it is 348.072 divided by 12. Then, ang makukuha natin for the final answer is 29.006 or in simplest form is 29.01. So, for the variance of our group data, ang nakuha natin is this value. Now, next is for the standard deviation naman ng group data. So, huwag tayo masyado malito. Again, the standard deviation is just the square root of variance. Okay? For the group data, our formula is for the population, sigma is equal to the square root of the value of summation of product of x minus mu squared all divided by 2n. Then for the sample naman, um, we have s is equal to square root of summation of x minus mean squared all divided by 2n. Ganun ulit, gagamitin lang natin yung parehong set of data natin kanina doon sa variance. Para, hindi, para at least available na lahat ng kailangan natin data. Or kailangan natin value. Okay. So, yan. For the standard deviation, ganun uli, gagawa lang tayo uli ng table, which will consist, again, of six columns. Kung mapapansin nyo, nakuha na natin itong mga, nakuha na natin yung mga values dito kanina. Uulitin lang natin. We will have a review. So, for the X, again, like for the just like how we uh, we get the x for the formula of mean of group data x will be the average of the higher and lower value of your group or range data so for 80 to 82 so 80 plus 82 it's 162 divided by 2 we'll be getting 81 
Then, since meron na tayong value ng x, makukuha na rin natin yung ating mean. Then, then, for the mean, it is 89.077. We will just repeat the process kanina, 81 minus 89.077. We will be getting negative 8.077. Then, square nat for the fifth column, square lang natin yung fourth column. Then, for the sixth column, ang gagawin lang natin is imumultiply natin the second column, si frequency, doon sa ating fifth column, yung x minus mean squared. Okay. Then, in, sa sum lang natin yung value kasi nga ang hinahanap natin for the formula is yung summation ng, e, ng, summation ng product ng f and x minus mean squared. 348.072. Okay. Now, for the ipaplot na natin doon sa ating formula. Yan. So, s is equals to square root of 348.072 divided by 2, 13 minus 1. Then, we will be getting square root of 29.006 or 5.386 or in simplest form is 5.39. Now, yung mga nabanggit kanina ni Mr. Perfecto or yung mga tinakal namin kanina, yung standard deviation, yung variance, yung quantiles, yung range, that are all the properties of measuring of variation. Pero bakit nga ba natin kailangan pang sukatin or alamin po ano yung variation ng set of data mo? So first is it determines the, real, the reliability of an average. For an example, um, for an example, we wanted to identify kung ano nga ba yung salary range or yung salary ng female ng MBA students. So, ang, ang, ang average natin is 20,000. However, yung ibang data mo is masyado ng malayo doon sa average. Let's say, meron kang part, part ng sample or ng population mo na 50,000 yung salary nila, hindi na magiging reliable na sabihin natin na Ah, yung salary ng females MBA students is 20,000 kasi meron doong part ng population na masyado ng malayo doon sa average ng data mo. And also, it determines the nature and cause of variation. Also, if you wanted to uh, to avoid yung variation, so dito mo malalaman kung saan nga ba nagsamula yung pagkakaroon ng variation ng set of data mo. Dito mo malalaman kung may dapat ka bang gabaguhin doon sa grouping ng data, doon sa pinanggalingan ng data, and such as. Then lastly, it enables you to compare two or more distributions with regard to their variability. For an example, um, pareho ng average salary si male at female students ng MBA. However, yung variability for the female students is may silang. Let's say, lahat sila, lahat ng data mo is malapit lang talaga doon sa 20,000 for the female students. However, for the male students, masyado nang malayo yung ibang data set doon sa average na 20,000. So, hindi natin masasabi na pareho lang ng salary si male and female kasi merong part of the data set for both groups na, magka na masyado nang malayo doon sa center or doon sa mismong average data mo. Okay, next. Um, for now, we will be um, tackling naman the, the measure of schoolness and kurtosis. Please bear with me kasi masyadong mahaba yung proseso ng pagkukompute ng to. So, for the schoolness, let's discuss muna kung ano si schoolness. It is the measure of symmetry or lack of symmetry of data from the center point. The degree of distortion from the symmetrical bell curve or the normal distribution. Na-discuss naman na natin kanina nila previous group yung normal distribution which is yung makikita ninyo sa sample ng line graph is yung orange one. So, for this kunis, we have positive good or right good. If you can still remember, natahal din ito ng ating first group from last last week nila Miss Crystal. Okay? So, for the positive good or right good, the mean, median, and mode of the distribution are positive rather than the negative or zero. Kung mapapansin nyo dito sa picture or sa sample, yung line graph natin is more, more na nasa right, I mean, more siyang nasa left. Yung center, ng ating, yung center ng ating data is nandoon sa left side, then hinahatak siya papuntang right. 
Then, we have another skewness, which is yung negative skewed or left skewed. Kabalik tara naman siya nung nauna. Mean, and mean, median, and mode of the distribution are negative rather than positive or zero. So like what I said, kabalik tara siya. Instead naman ng kanina, ang ating curve is more li na sa kanan or na sa right. Then hinahatak lang siya nung ibang outliers or nung ibang data set mo papunta doon sa left. Okay, for the um, value of skewness, if it is 0 0.5 and 1, then it is slightly skewed to the right. If it is greater than 1, then it is extremely skewed to the right. Then next for the um, negative skewed, if it is between negative 1 and negative 0 0.5, then it is slightly skewed to the left. Then if it's lesser than negative 1, extremely skewed siya to the left. Now, ano naman yung value ng skewness kapag normal distribution? If skewness is between 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, data are nearly symmetrical. Kapag normal distribution, ang laman lang niya is 0. So, kapag between 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, nearly symmetrical lang, meaning yung left and right portion ng iyong data set is almost equal. Okay, for the kurtosis naman, Kurtosis measures the relative concentration of values in the center of the distribution of a data set as compared with the tails. Or in other words, it is a measure of whether the data are heavy-tailed or light-tailed relative to a normal distribution. So kung mapapasin natin sa skunas kanina ang tinahal natin or ang hinaalam natin is kung saan papunta yung set ng distribution mo compared to the center point. Ito naman, for the kurtosis, ang inaalam natin is yung outliers na o yung mismong tails ng ating graph or ng ating data set. So we have three types of kurtosis. One is mesocortex distribution. It is medium-tailed. So outliers are neither highly frequent nor highly infrequent. So it has three kurtosis. Um, normal distribution, I sorry, Normal distribution has three kurtosis, so any distribution with approximately three kurtosis or zero excess kurtosis. So mesocortex, kung mapapansin natin siya dito sa picture sample natin, it is again the, the orange line. Then another type is the platycortic distribution, so it is thin-tailed, meaning the outliers are infrequent. Kung mapapansin natin siya, ito naman yung blue. Meaning, yung tail natin is maiksi lang. So, yung outliers mo outside the center or the normal distribution, ito, ito, ito. yung sa gitna is kakaunti lang yung outliers. So, to, de to, de to determine um, any distribution with less than 3 kurtosis or less than 0 excess kurtosis is platycortic distribution. Number 3, platycortic distribution. It is spot-tailed meaning that there are a lot of outliers. So, um, kung mapapansin natin dito sa graph natin, ito naman si green line. So, kung mapapansin natin from the center of the data, marami tayong outliers pa sa magkabila ang dulo. So, for to define any distribution with more than 3 kurtosis or more than 0 excess kurtosis is leptocortic distribution. Now you may ask what is 0 excess kurtosis? For some statistician to say um if they just wanted to know kapag heavy tailed or light tailed ang kanilang distribution, ang kanilang basis lang is the normal distribution na meron 3 kurtosis. So ang inaalam lang nila is Sobra ba ako or kulang ako doon sa three kurtosis na yun? That's why um may minsan ang definition lang natin is if it's more than or less than the zero excess kurtosis. Okay, now we'll be giving naman the um formulas for both skewness kurtosis um for any group data. Population skew is equals to summation of x minus mu raised to 3 or divided by 2 n times sigma raised to 3. Then, for example, school is, school is equals to summation of x minus mean raised to 3 or divided by 2 and minus 1 times s raised to 3. Then, for the group data, masyado na mahaba, hindi ko nababanggitin lahat niyong pagkakabasa. Pero here's for the group data ng schoolness. Here's for the group data ng ating kurtosis. And here naman for the group data ng ating kurtosis.
So, kung mapapansin natin, ang pinagkaiba lang ng formula ni Skunes and in Cortosis, yung exponential nila. So, for the Skunes, it's always um, raised to 3. For the Cortosis, it always raised to 4. Okay, now we'll be tackling yung per, uh, magbibigay tayo ng example para doon sa ungroup data. Ang set na gagamitin natin is nagamit na ni Mr. Perfecto earlier. So, it is Ages of MBA students, 22, 32, 30, 25, 35, 28, 30. So, just like kanina, nakuha na natin yung mean 28.857. Nakuha na rin ni Mr. Perfecto ang ating standard deviation, with it, which is yung 4.337. Nagagawin na natin yung table. Okay, for the table, again, for the X, it, it is... 22, 32, 30, 25, 35, 28, 30. For the second column, kukunin natin yung x minus mean. So, it is 22 minus 28.857, which we will be getting negative 6.857. Now, for the third column, ang gagawin lang natin is yung nakuha natin yung value from the second column ay i-raise natin to third exponential or to the third power. Ang makukuha natin for negative 6857 raised to 3 is equals to negative 322.406. Then, pre-computed na for the other rows. Next, or in the last column, is yung x minus mean raised to 4. Ang makukuha naman, ay sorry, sinam, isisampala muna natin yung x minus mean cube natin. Ang makukuha natin is negative 114.564. So, again, for the fourth column, i-raise to 4 lang natin yung nakuha natin dito sa second column. Ayan, which is 2,210.734 for the negative 6.857 raised to 4. Then, for the other rows, pre-computed na po natin siya. Then, isasum natin yung ating nakuhang value from the fourth column. Ang makukuha natin is 3,736.311. Now, since meron na tayong value doon sa at, na nanggaling doon sa ating table, pwede na natin siyang i-plot sa ating formula. So again, for the formula of scoop ng ating sample is summation of x minus mean raised to third power is equals to n minus, ay sorry, divided by to n minus 1 times s raised to third power. Okay, so ipa-plot lang natin. Yung ating summation of x minus mean raised to third power is itong nakuha natin sa mismong third column, yung negative 114.564. Then, for divided by 7 minus 1 times 4.337 raised to 3. Si 4.337 is yung ating standard deviation dito sa taas. Si 7 is yung total ng ating data. Then, ang mahukuha natin, for, ikukunin muna natin or gagalawin muna natin yung nakaparentesis doon sa baba. So, 6 times 81.577. Ang mahukuha natin now is negative 114.564 over 489.463 or in simplest form, negative 0.23. Now, for the kurtosis, ang pinagkaiba lang again is nakaraise lang siya to fourth power. So, na ipa-flat na natin uli, just like nung kanina sa school. So, 3,736.311 all divided by 2, 7 minus 1 times 4.337 raised to 4. Yeah, um, so, o nga pala, uh, baka malito kayo, basta yung 4.337 raised to 4, kaya ako siya nilagyan ng parenthesis para yan yung unang-una yung gagawan muna ng exponential. Okay, so 7 minus 1 is equals to 6. 4.337 raised to 4 is 353.8. Then, ang makukuha natin is 3,736.311 over 2,122.799 or 1.76. Huwag tayo masyadong ma-overwhelm sa data. Trust lang natin yung process kung paano natin ginagawa. Baka masyado kayong nalulula kasi puro numero na yung nakikita ninyo. Okay. So, for the ungroup data, let's try to um, reflect it in a graph. So, again, the ages of MBA student, 22, 32, 30, 25, 35, 28, 30. In a graph, ito yung magiging itsura niya. So, again, if this, yung school natin is negative 0.23. 
ang nabanggit nga natin kanina, if schoolness is between z negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, data are nearly, are nearly symmetrical from the center. Kung mapapansin nyo, ang center natin is nandito sa line na to. Then, yung, po, yung gilid natin is almost symmetrical yung curve natin. Or almost pantay yung left and right ng curve natin. Okay, now for the kurtosis naman, kurt natin is equals to 1.76. Again, if kurtosis is less than 3, outliers are infrequent or platycartic distribution. So kung mapapansin natin dito sa ungroup data, hindi naman masyadong long-tailed yung atin. So pumasok tayo doon sa platycartic distribution or masyadong mataas yung ating curve. Okay, for the group data naman, Mas mahaba to, so please bear with me. Have a patience na makinig pa. Okay, for the exam score um, exam score of MBA students na gamit na natin to kanina na data set doon sa variance and standard deviation. So, ganun ulit. Gagawa tayo ng table. Mas mahaba na. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 10 na siya na columns. But still, again, just... Um, trust the process ng pagko-compute ng ating schoolness and ng ating kurtosis. So, again, nakuha na natin kanina yung value ng x. Then, nakuha na rin natin kanina yung value ng ating mean, which is yung 89.077 for the third column. Nakuha na rin natin siya kanina for standard deviation and variance. Ayan, so, Ito na yung mismong column natin kanina. So, ang summation is equals to 30 for 348. 0.072. So, dito na tayo sa ating um, 6 to 10 column. Uh, sorry, 7 to 10 column. So, for the 7 column, x minus mean raised to 3, ang gagawin lang natin is itong si 4th column natin, yung value is i-raise lang natin to 3rd power. So, ang makukuhan, sorry for the standard deviation. So, ang makukuhan natin is negative 526.927. Then, yung for the second co second row, ang makukuha naman natin is negative 130.864. Then, for the other rows, pre-computed na siya. Na, for the um, eighth column, yung nakuha natin from the seventh column, imumultiply lang natin siya doon sa ating frequency or doon sa second column. So, ang makukuha natin is negative 526.927 times 1 is equals itself yung negative 526.927. For the second row, negative 130.864 times 2 is equals to negative 261.728. Pre-computed na for the other rows. Then naman tayo sa next. So, for the next naman, yung value, again, na nakuha natin from the fourth column, e raise naman natin siya to fourth exponential. And so, for the negative 8.077 raised to 4, ang makukuha natin is 4,255.987. Then for the other rows, again, pre-computed na po natin siya. Then for the last column, finally, um, ang gagawin naman natin is itong si ninth column, e mumultiply lang natin siya uli doon sa ating frequency doon sa second column. So, for 4,255.987 times 1 is equals to 4,255.987. 664.399 times 2 is equals to 1,328.798. Since nakuha na natin, yung, or nabuo na natin yung ating table, let's go for the computation of SKU. Again, for the group data, ang SKU natin is equals to summation of product of x minus mean raised to third power ta and f all divided by 2 n minus 1 times s raised to the third power. So, kukunin natin yung ating um, dividend, which is yung summation of f and x minus mean raised to 3. Ito na yung makukuha natin, 868.393. Ipoplot lang natin siya doon sa ating formula. We'll be getting 868.393. Yung n natin is yung ating summation of f. So, si summation of f is ito, yung 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. So, it's total of 13. 13 minus 1 
times 5.386 point raised to 3. Si 5.386 is yung ating standard deviation. Then, we will be getting, kapag inuna natin yung parenthesis, 868.393 or divided by 2, 12 times 156.242. Then, our um, ating schoolness now is 868.393 the over 1,874.91 or in simplest form is 0 0.46. For the hortosis, again, ang pinagkaiba lang nila is nakaraise lang siya to fourth power or fourth exponential. So, since kailangan natin yung summation ng um, f, summation ng product ng f and x minus mean raised to 4, itong ating 10 column, isasum lang natin siya, which is yung 20,205.122. Ipoplat natin doon sa ating formula. So, 20,205.122 divided by 2, 13 minus 1, yung ating summation of f or yung ating n times 5386, which is yung ating standard deviation, raised to 4. Then we will be getting 20,205.122 divided by 12 times 841.522. Then ang makukuha natin kurtosis is 20,205.122 over 10,098.262 or in simplest form is 2. So again, kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina for the ungrouped data, plinat ko rin siya into a graph. So, here, again, ito yung set ng data natin. Then, here's the graph. So, for the school, it is 0 0.46. If schoolness is between 0 0.5 and 0, negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, data are nearly symmetrical. For the kurtosis, um, we got 2. If kurtosis is less than 3, outliers are infrequent, then platycortic distribution. So, medyo pangat lang yung ating ano, line graph kasi ma-XCR ko unti lang yung laman ng data set natin. Pero if we will be handling for a more or lot number of um, data set, mas makikita ninyo yung pagkakaroon ng curve or yung pagkakaroon ng relationship ng curve ng school and curve natin. And so, that's, um, that's it for our group. Thank you. And... Wala, finish na. Thank you.